So much to say that I don't really know where to begin. Let's just start by saying that there's a massive difference between Iran the government and Iran the country. We all know what the media writes, says and shows about Iran and how biased it's often portrayed. Many of you may imagine Iran as a land of American hating extremists, gun toting men and burqa club women. I tend not to trust mainstream media. I prefer to go see things with my own eyes before having any opinion about a country. And now that I've been there, I can tell you that the Iran I saw had nothing to do with those things. And the bigger picture is much more complex than what we see on the news. Tehran, the capital. Counting about a million people, it's a big city that looks like many other big cities in the world. The traffic is bad, pollution too, the streets are crowded, the culture is multi-layered. A mix of Western, Persian and Islamic shades. But I'm not spending much time in Tehran, I'm headed south. my very messy hotel room. <laughs> we got to Shiraz last night and today instead of going to do the usual sightseeing and you know of course when you say Shiraz everybody knows the pink mosque and that's the image that comes to your mind but today I want to show you a different side of Shiraz, the more local side and my favorite part of any country in the world, the market. I can't say this enough. If you want to see the true soul of a country, go to the market. You can understand a lot about a culture just by looking at what people eat. And here is where it all starts. Did I mention the food is incredible in Iran? There are too many great Iranian dishes to mention them all, but let's start with this. Ash. As close as it gets to street food and very, very cheap, is a soup made of chickpeas, vegetables, mint, mincemeat, and noodles. Or this. Biryani. Minced lamb shoulder mixed with saffron, mint, cinnamon, turmeric, garlic, and onions. And then, of course, there's this. Chalo kebab. Ever present in Iran, a staple. And how not to mention this, Iranian sweets, an endless variety of delicious, delicious goodness. Oh, I almost forgot about something very, very important. This. Like in many other Middle Eastern countries, bread in Iran is an essential part of daily life. And this is how they make it. So, if you visit Iran, please, eat everything you can. They 
Shanghai, we just get to Yaz, which is a city that looks a little older than the others. And uh, the specialty here is clay and pottery and all that. And um, the look of uh, the alleys is very particular. Loving it so far. And I'll show you around. Wrapped among two deserts, Yaz is thought to be one of the oldest cities in the world. The look of the Tango Ochre Clay alleys give it a more magical 1001 90 vibe. If you make it here, get lost in the old town and you'll know what I mean. But we have to leave Yaz behind quickly to head to the next city. It's Fahun. Isfahan is the third largest city in Iran, former capital of Persia and most visited city in the country, attracting tourists from all over the world with its mesmerizing architecture. Imam Square is the second biggest square in the world, home of the Shah and the Imam Mosque and gathering place for local youth and families who fill the square and join a walk, a chat, End of the road. One last stop before going home. Hundred miles from Isfahan, time stopped. Right now we're in Aviane, it's a village, red village in the mountains. It's supposed to be very old and very picturesque, so it's very different from any other part of Iran I've seen. Abiyane is one of the oldest villages in Iran. There's only about 300 people living here, mainly elderly. Driving back to Tehran, the last bit of this road trip. Along the way, stretches of roads scattered with martyrs' images. People who died during the eight years long Iran Iraq War, a war that killed hundreds of thousands of Iranians and left a deep wound in the population spirit. When you hit the road in Iran, you don't just drive through mountains and deserts and cities, you drive through history crossing ruins of a long-lost civilization. Before leaving for this trip, everyone kept asking me, isn't Iran dangerous? Aren't you afraid to go? The answer was, and still is, no, not at all. Travel never scares me, it fuels me. Iran is a land with an ancient soul, rich history, unbelievable architecture, amazing food, millinery craft, and surely made of the kindest and most welcoming people I ever crossed path with on my travels. The Iran you see on the news exists, yes, Iran can be heartbreaking at times, but that's not the Iran I saw on the streets. I saw beauty, I saw kindness, hospitality in its purest form. I saw how much words matter in Iran, and that's why I'm using mine wisely here. One word in particular gave me a lot to think about, freedom. I saw how often we give it for granted. I 
So beautiful people, kind people, welcoming people, curious <laughs> people, proud people, proud of their country, their culture, their food, proud of what they do to show it to you, and proud to have you there. You'll hear it everywhere. Yay! Um, it has been a beautiful and intense trip. I will need some time to find the right words to talk about this country. Uh, the main truth I found here is that people are incredibly nice, incredibly welcoming. I know I say it about a lot of countries, but here is particularly true. I wasn't expected to be treated and greeted so warmly by total strangers. It, it, it has been amazing. I met some truly beautiful people and I'm very thankful for it. And I'm especially thankful for these two, Maddie and Bahar, my guys, now friends. Give me a hug. Love you. <laughs> so, is it safe to travel to Iran? Yes, undoubtedly. Is it beautiful? Beyond expectations. And how does one sum up Iran? You can't. You have to go there, live it on your own skin, see it with your own eyes. Bon voyage.